Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the improved Howland current pump. Um, it's a op-amp circuit with five resistors and a voltage reference which can be used to generate a constant current for a few milliamps, tens of milliamps, which can be used to drive an LED or a sensor or anything that requires a small amount of current which doesn't require particularly high efficiency. So let's get started. Here we have a difference amplifier. A difference amplifier is probably the fundamental building block of a Howland current pump. And you'll notice that this is a unity gain difference amplifier. That means that the input and output have a gain of one. They're multiplied by one. Um, there's no scaling. Um, and there's a few different things that are interesting about a different amplifier. The first is that it doesn't matter if one of these terminals is ground. Um, in fact, it doesn't matter what they are at all. You'll notice that the output voltage isn't changing. Um, that's because the output is dependent on only the voltage at this node subtracted from the voltage at this node. It doesn't depend on the the values referenced to this ground at all. It's just the subtraction of these two. And in this case, it's 1 minus 0 is 1. And in this case, oh, it's 0 minus minus 1, which is 1 again. And there you go, you have it at the output. So that's the fundamental building block. And if you add a resistor to load the op amp, just a load resistor, it doesn't actually do anything to the gain. It doesn't do anything to the grounds, um, and it really doesn't affect the circuit at all. So that is probably the first step to building a Howland current pump. Um, first, I'm going to remove this ground because it really doesn't matter. It doesn't do anything to the circuits. And I guess the next thing to notice is that if you have one volt on the output and one K here, then you're always going to have one milliamp going through it. And that that can be used, that can be a useful trait in um, understanding a Howland current pump. So if we made this one ohm, which I'm going to do now, you'll notice that the output hasn't changed at all and the, the um, gain hasn't changed at all. There's an interesting property of this circuit and it's that the whole circuit is basically referenced to this point. It's the only ground in the circuit. And that means you can make it a virtual ground, um, which um, is frequently created with just a unity gain op amp. So let's create a, um, a buffer. And we're going to buffer ground. <laughs> it's kind of useless, but I will get to this. And I'm just going to move the load all the way over here. I'm still going to connect it to ground. And then I'm going to connect that buffer up here. Just move it down a little bit and move that up. So this is all fine. Now we've got this virtual ground here and we can also connect it here. We can connect the virtual ground to the, the ground over here. And it doesn't actually matter what this voltage is, the whole circuit will shift with it because every element, every node in the circuit is referenced to this point here, the virtual ground, um, where the absolute ground is over here. So what we're going to do is apply a voltage source here and see what happens. So if I put one volt here, the whole circuit has shifted up. That's two volts. That's two volts. Okay, so with that, we can say that um, this is a true virtual ground. We can use this as a virtual ground without really worrying too much. And this output is still actually one volt when you compare it to the virtual ground, which is here. So let's do that. Let's probe the op amp output with respect to the virtual ground. Um, and I'll just use one of these probes over here, just like this one. And you'll see it is one volt, as it always should have been. So if we change the offset of the whole circuit to two volts, now it's, it's outputting three volts, but the virtual ground is now two volts. And three minus two is still one volt. So 
what we're able to do with that is create a constant voltage over this resistance. And a constant voltage over a resistor is a constant current. So now what we can do is something like this. We can put a another resistor here and no matter what we change this to it will still have one milliamp going through it um, where the path through the resistor is down here. And I'll just make a more obviously labeled circuit. There you go. Where the path is down here for the current. And the reason it's constant is only because you've got a constant voltage across this resistor. Now, a unity gain buffer has a few properties to it. It has the property that the input is very high impedance. A very high impedance when compared to these values here. And the other property is that the output is very low impedance, as in it has it has a very low output resistance and that is actually what this has this one ohm is a very low resistance um, so maybe without too much error we can simply remove that buffer entirely and place it like this now this has a problem you'll notice that a lot of the current is flowing in from the um, non-inverting side of the op-amp. And that is creating error. See, we've actually got one and a half amps going, one and a half milliamps going through that output resistor. Now, how do we deal with that? Well, the real issue was the impedance. We, we want that, that terminal here to be as high impedance as possible. So all we have to do is increase the resistors for that section of the circuit. And now, almost no current is traveling through this section of the circuit because it's behaving very high impedance, as in um, very high resistance. That means that you've got a very low current if the voltage isn't enormous. Um, so you can say that the vast majority of the current is flowing through this resistor here, through here, and you only lose a very small fraction through this wire. And in this case, it's five microamps, which is just nothing. And this is the Howland current pump. It's a very simple circuit. The sources of error are, of course, um, the current going through this section of the feedback loop, the input offset of the op amp. You, with high impedance feedback resistors, you you get input current. You get this current bias, and that will create a, a sort of offset, which can become a problem. And you can also get some stability issues. Um, with the circuit and sometimes you'll want to do something like this but often this isn't the case and often you can just get away with just doing some old resistors and yeah it'll be alright um, um, this is the Helen current pump hope you've learned something from this video if you like it leave a thumbs in the thingy and I uh, will see you next time bye